against the rumble Where on the wall of a 2,800 cubic inch brand new in the uh, in the dive, the air coming across the oil coolers and the leading edge of the wing will actually set up a whistling, a very distinct whistle. And the enemy called this airplane whistling death. Designed and built by a chance squad company is known as the Corsair. They also call this airplane the best wing bird. And you'll see why right here in the day of arcs and round, there is a definite bend in the wing about one third of the way out from the fuselage. That happens to be where the wings can fold to get more of these aircraft on the deck or below the deck of an aircraft carrier. It is also because it is a carrier based aircraft at the very bottom of the lowest part of the wing as it comes out, that's where they attach the landing gear. Because when you land on the deck of an aircraft carrier, it is not so much of a landing as it, as it is a controlled crash. Take full, Gallows in Michigan, executing a maneuver known as the Barrel Roll, which was the highest coordinated maneuver that changed steep direction and altitude, getting in the pilots ready for the combat arena in World War II. Great success story in 1940, an airplane just like this one set an official world speed record in level flight of 405 miles an hour. And this airplane was ready for World War II, first used by the British before we got into the war, but later adapted to the Navy and Marine Corps. Production run was from 1940 to 1952 or early 1953 with well over 12,000 of these airplanes built. As Dave Bolton was the victory of all the men wing work. 12,000, over 12,000 produced right now. On the registration books, there are only 28 that are still registered, and of those 28, not all of them are actively flying. The airplane cost the government $50,000 during World War II. After the war, there were so many that were surplus, you could have bought one for $1,200. Today, they are worth over $2 million apiece. Now, even though it was a piston-powered, propeller-driven fighter against other aircraft of those types, it did very well. And as we went into the Korean War, it was to be a jet war in the dogfight arena. Many of the pistol-powered fighters were still used in Korea, but mostly in the ground attack role. Why? Because in a dogfight, a jet aircraft is clearly 100 miles an hour faster than a prop-driven airplane. And the prop guys wouldn't have much of a chance. However, there is an exception to that. There were 40 United States aces in the Korean War, which, by the way, was... 39 of those were in a jet to F-86 Sabre by North American Aviation. There was only one Navy pilot and only one piston airplane, and it looked just like this one. It was Lieutenant Guy Balderon, the only Navy ace of the Korean War. By the way, is the designation of this airplane that actually came off the assembly line after World War II was complete. Now, they did relegate these to the Navy and Marine Corps in a ground attack role. They loaded the bottom side with as much armament as they could get on them because weight was not much of a problem because they didn't have to work off the deck of an aircraft carrier. So they loaded them down to a gross weight of almost 19,000 pounds. They equipped it with the engine with the highest horsepower of all of the series of horses, 2,800 horsepower, and they attacked the enemy's ground positions. They did that very effectively as well. But in the dogfight arena, their hero was over. Now there was another trick. This being an airplane that was qualified to land on the deck of a carrier, it has a tail hook, and when you land on the carrier, it's the tail hook and not the brakes that stop the airplane. There are four wires spread across the deck of the aircraft carrier. And on touchdown, the tail hook grabs one of the four wires 
stops the playing of their excited 300 feet. In the event the pilot has a polter, where the tail hook bounces off the deck of the carrier, he is ready at maximum power to take off and go around again. As David makes his last pass, the guy's coming back without any bullets or armament or anything left, trying to trying to do the most effective damage they could to the enemy, would drop only the tail hook. They fly low over the enemy's transmission lines, communication lines, and electrical lines, and disrupt communication by breaking those lines that the enemy had, reducing their communication level and also reducing the electricity that they had. They call that top yeah. What is it? I think they're doing a comparison side by side with the IPA and uh, the guy that's leaving. Really? Uh, Pepsi Man knows? So when the kids are thirsty, we're going to do that. We'll always get in line to get a drink. With a client coming to us from Albuquerque, New Mexico, it's Bob Carlton. And it's super salt of the client. Now, Bob is found a jet engine on a. All right, that's Bob coming directly from the guy. We're going to play some very general music. Uh, he's got a gin and chips back. He's just mother. Oh, God. He's just now.